In this month's episode of Speak Out and Play, I'll talk about who is the perfect game reviewer, what is happening in Warfighter Corner, what is happening on the Seek Out and Play YouTube channel, and what's coming up for April, all on Speak Out and Play. Hello and welcome to Speak Out and Play, a monthly podcast that focuses on what is happening at the Seek Out and Play YouTube channel, along with some of the goings on in the wargaming world. Spring, beautiful spring has arrived with all its warmth, green grass, blooming flowers, tornado warnings, hail the size of something else falling from the sky, and bugs. Lots and lots of bugs. So in the spirit of new things, I thought I'd give my advice on how you can find the perfect game reviewer. In my last podcast, I pondered the question of what is the perfect game? So in fairness, I should also ask, who is the perfect game reviewer? I can tell you that the answer to the question is not me. Uh, I do not review games, which may be why my subscriber number isn't all that high, considering I've been doing this for almost five years. But putting that aside, is there a perfect game reviewer? Yes. Yes, there is. Because it is not a single person or a group of people. The perfect game reviewer is the one who relates to you. One of the biggest misconceptions about critics, whether they review games, movies, television shows, and the like, is that the point of their criticism is to tell you what is good, what is bad, and what is mediocre. In truth, the point of a reviewer is to provide information not to a group of people, but to you. Because everyone has different taste. The point of the review is focused on whether a particular game may be suitable to what you like about games. Perhaps the biggest issue with the reviewers in fields like gaming is that the purpose has been warped over the years. In movies, uh, that would be Rotten Tomatoes. But for games, it's probably the BGG customer reviews. In essence, the totality of positive or negative reviews is what matters when considering a game. However, and to some this may sound surprising, whether a reviewer likes or dislikes a game is really not relevant to the value of the review. Let that sink in for a minute. If you accept the notion that everyone has their own set of likes and dislikes, that you have your own set of dislikes, that everyone has individual taste, then the totality of positive or negative reviews is not relevant to whether you will enjoy or not enjoy a game. Because you're not a collective. You are an individual. And since you have your own set of standards, then whether one, a hundred, a thousand, or a million people like a game, that doesn't apply to you. Now, I'll give you an example from the movie world. Uh, I knew the late Roger Ebert's taste in movies like the back of my hand. I had watched him since the mid-1970s when he was on PBS, OETA in Oklahoma, but PBS before he and Siskel created their own syndicated review show. By the turn of the 21st century, he had established his own review website. In 2009, he reviewed The Hangover which was an R-rated comedy. He gave it three out of four stars. I read his review, and I went running to see the film. A few months later, another R-rated comedy hit the screens. Ebert gave that three out of four stars, just like he did The Hangover. I read the review, and there was no way on God's green earth I was going to go see that movie. Two R-rated comedies, two identical star ratings, for all from the same reviewer, and yet two entirely different reactions on my part. Why? The answer was in how he described each movie. The words he used in describing each film played the most important role in my decision of whether to see it. Because that is how well I knew Roger Ebert. The very words he used provide the information that I needed to make my decision. I'll put it to you this way. Everyone knows someone could be a second cousin, perhaps someone you met in college, or somebody you work with, and when they say, oh yeah, man, that movie is great, you gotta go see it, you're thinking, there is no way I'm gonna go see that movie because your taste in films is terrible. That is the perfect reviewer. Someone who you know well enough to gauge how well you will enjoy something based on the words that they say. 
Keep in mind that there are three types of movies, and there's really three types of games, for that matter, in terms of reviews. The games that you're going to buy no matter what, the games that you will never buy no matter what, and the games in which you have a serious interest in purchasing, something that you would normally do automatically, but there is a critical piece of information that is missing. And that is where a reviewer becomes important. That critical piece of information could be anything. Although, whether the reviewer thinks the game is good or not is often not what the purchaser needs to make their decision. The words the reviewer uses should convey how they really feel about the game. And that's what's truly important. The specific words used, the tone, the intent, speak far greater than the positive or negative aspects that they mention in their review. After all, there is a difference between what you enjoy as a game and whether you believe it is a good game in general. When the reviewer is being straightforward in how they feel about a game as they played it, they are offering insights that you can use. The best way to discover who is the perfect reviewer is for you to look up the reviews of games that you enjoy from the review YouTube channels that are available. It's going to take some research, a little time, but listen carefully to how they describe their opinions, not just whether they like or dislike a game. This means that you need to find the review channels, uh, listen to reviews of games that you like, listen to the words that they say, and then compare that to your own feelings. And then what uh, feelings about games? So that way you can make a better informed choice about the games that you purchase. So the perfect reviewer is the critic that you know well enough that the very words they use is what helps you make the best informed decision. Because you're an individual. Your taste in the games you like is unique. So you need to find that one reviewer that you know well enough that their very words signal whether a game that you are on the fence about purchasing is right for you. Will the perfect game reviewer give a shine to Warfighter Chator? Well, I don't know, but that is the subject of Warfighter Corner for this podcast. As of the release of this podcast, Warfighter Chator should be upon us. The Kickstarter should be either on or scheduled, which means a whole new world for Warfighter. I've already described some of the new rules for Warfighter Chator in a previous podcast. So to sum up what new elements will be in the core set, I will start with the field points. Field points are earned when destroying Chator monsters without using fire, explosion, or spray attacks. The field points you earn can be used to purchase or spark new gear or skills, which can be employed right away. In addition to standard and fire attacks, there is a new type of attack known as cryo or cryogenic, which can place slows on a hostile, which reduces their cover and makes them easier to kill with using standard weapons. This new type of attack leads to considering the type of tactics needed for each mission, namely the balancing of weapons for your team. Standard weapons offer plenty of ammo but have limited capabilities against strong monsters. Fire weapons can penetrate the hide of monsters, but that means if you kill them with fire or spray or explosives, for that example, you will not gain any field points. Uh, plus, they have limited ammo as well. Cryo weapons can be used to make it easier to kill monsters without using fire spray or explosives, but they have limited ammo as well. Keep in mind that with field points, you can purchase new weapons during a mission. So if your plans or your team changes, you may be able to adapt using field points that you garner. Despite the addition of new rules, the concepts are pretty straightforward. The idea being to make the game flow more smoothly so you can think about the tactics and not so much about the rules. As I said, I do not review games, but the sheer number of Warfighter videos that I've made, you can probably tell that I enjoy the system. There is certainly a lot of promise here thanks to the slimmed down approach, and yet it does still include some new rules. Unfortunately, Warfighter Chator has not hit my table, nor will it, until the Kickstarter has finished, but I can tell you what's on my table right now. I've sort of kind of started a new feature for the channel, which is playing one game a week. The idea being that every Monday I will post a photo of what is on my game table using YouTube notifications, X, and my Facebook pages. 
New games will be few and far between, unfortunately, at least for the foreseeable future. So it'll probably mostly be Warfighter and the many missions that it offers, along with some other games. I do play games rather regularly, but this is the first time I've purposely decided to play one game or one scenario or one mission each week. This is something I did for Thrilling Tales, and it's possible, operative word, possible, that I might revive the series for the podcast channel based on playing games once a week, with occasional videos to be made from the games themselves. Warfighter is the perfect choice because it's a system that I'm familiar with, even if I'm not the best at playing it. As you can probably tell, I do favor World War II core sets to a considerable degree, but one aspect that I will put to the test in my weekly play sessions, uh, which uh, started this week, is testing out the single soldier mission. In the Enigma Machine expansion, there is a mission that only allows for one soldier to be purchased. It's called the Argonaut. The total resource points is just 29, so purchasing more than one player soldier would be difficult to say the least anyway for other missions. As you might know, I'm an advocate for having at least two player soldiers in each mission if possible. Two player soldiers essentially doubles the card draw, which I find crucial to success in Warfighter. Uh, I cannot count the number of times my bacon has been saved by drawing cards or cards that I need to get out of a hazardous situation that I found myself in. So normally, one player soldier is not going to cut it. However, when the resource point value is just 29, one player soldier is basically all you can take. So how do you overcome the limitations of playing just one soldier? The answer will probably be the subject of a Warfighter video I will make for the channel, but I have a few preliminary thoughts on that. A crucial skill is local knowledge. This skill allows you to choose any location card you want from the deck at a cost of two experience points. The greatest limitation in having only one player soldier is that you might spend action after action discarding and drawing cards to find a location. Local knowledge not only gets you a location card, but it gets you the card that you want for your immediate needs. Of course, you have to get two experience points in the first place, so there needs to be a way to draw another location card. Binoculars is a gear that costs a single point, which can fish out a location card with a cost of an action. You do have to roll a die, but you get the location card off the top of the location deck if you roll a three or above. The binoculars can help you get started, and when you start building up experience points, local knowledge can take over. Of course, with your card drawing, you will get more location cards as well. Uh, as I said, once I've played around with this concept a few times with different missions, I will make a video for the channel. Uh, however, I did play Attack and the Mutants, an out-of-print game by Yaquinto. The results will be made into my annual playthrough of the game, which comes out in October. Last year, I made a Thrilling Tales out of it, which worked pretty well, in my honest opinion. And I will do the same this October. Now, is Attack of the Mutants a perfect game? For a game that hasn't been in print for over 40 years, I'd have to say that given what it is supposed to be, Attack of the Mutants is perfect. You have a variable setup for both humans and mutants. The rules are simple, clear, and straightforward. A large percentage of the games that I've played have come right down to the wire. But perhaps most importantly, the mechanics complement the theme. I've played many games in which either the theme seems slapped onto the mechanics or the mechanics were somewhat lacking in carrying out the theme. In this case, the wild swings of luck with the all-or-nothing nature of the combat fit perfectly into the B-movie theme of the game. Momentum shifts are frequent, and what seems like a sure thing blows up in your face, or a last desperate stand turns into destroying the enemy completely. I can almost hear the theme music as the game begins and ends. I'd love to see Attack of the Mutants get reprinted, but uh, it doesn't seem like any Uquinto games are available for that. Otherwise, I think we would have seen at least a few of them by now. My only complaint is that the map size is like a tad too small. The album jacket format that Uquinto used is brilliant packaging, but the building itself that is displayed could be a little bit bigger in my opinion. Uh, I may, operative word, may get it scanned and increase the size so that the counters fit a little better onto the map. 
Whether I spruce up Attack of the Mutants remains to be seen, but I can tell you what's in the works for the Seek Out and Play YouTube channel for April. The month of April will officially start with a new pattern for how I create videos. In the past, I have used the months of September, October, and then March and April to create all the videos that are scheduled for the year, which basically means four months of production for a year's worth of videos. Now I'm making three to four videos each month. The trade-off, hopefully, will be that the result of the videos are improved in terms of their overall quality. I cannot say that they'll be any longer, but that by focusing more on a few videos at a time rather than creating a lot of videos at once, the number of mistakes will be reduced. At least I hope the number of mistakes will be reduced. Uh, no promises, but you know it's a different approach to try different things. It does seem like Warfighter Vietnam will be released to Kickstarter members sometime in late April or early May, but the rulebook has been released. So my goal will be when the game gets into my hands, uh, I will have created the scripts, which will help bring new players in to get started on the game, explain some of the new rules and the concepts that Warfighter Vietnam will bring. That will most likely include the campaign system, which is described in the final few pages of the rulebook. So there will probably be three to four videos on Warfighter Vietnam, but the first such videos may not come out until late May or June, depending on when I receive the game. As for the videos that I will produce in April 2024, I have not finalized that schedule yet. However, it'll probably be similar to how I approach Warfighter Vietnam. I'll choose a single game and produce two, three, or four videos, and perhaps create a video on another game or subject. And I will let you know in the next Speak Out and Play podcast what videos that I have produced. But speaking of videos, here is a preview of the videos coming out on the Seek Out and Play YouTube channel for the month of April 2024. For the first Wednesday in April 2024, Seek Out and Play presents a video on the different play modes in Stalingrad, Inferno on the Volga by Vento Nuovo Games. The video features rules which cover the cooperative, competitive, and two-player modes the game has to offer. While primarily a solitaire game, Stalingrad Inferno on the Volga also offers two-player and two-versus-one player options. This allows for one, two, or three players to play the game. The video will help guide new players to Stalingrad Inferno on the Volga in setting up and playing the different game modes. For the second Wednesday in April 2024, Seek Out and Play presents an unboxing video on Warfighter World War II Expansion No. 83, Savoia Cavalleria. The video showcases the soldiers, weapons, gear, skills, missions, objectives, locations, events, and hostels found within the expansion. The video is designed to be short, to the point, and you can stop the video to get a better look at the cards. In addition, the video offers a brief history of the unit, including its formation and service that existed for hundreds of years before they were sent to Russia to fight alongside German forces during World War II. For the third Wednesday in April, Seek Out and Play presents Blocks in the East, the Scorched Earth Optional Rules. In this short video, the optional rules for how to apply the Scorched Earth policy is explained, including how the rules are implemented, how production points are destroyed and can be rebuilt, and how factories can be moved by Russian forces so that they are relocated out of harm's way. Blocks in the East is part of the Block series by Vento Novo Games that includes Blocks in the West and Blocks in Africa. Check out more videos on Vento Novo Games when you visit the Seek Out and Play YouTube channel. Also, I have an X and Facebook page which delivers news about the channel, along with a monthly podcast which you can find on Spotify and BuzzFeed. And if you want to support my efforts in maintaining the channel, I have a Patreon page for monthly donations, or you can buy me a beer for a one-time donation. Check out more videos on the Seek Out and Play YouTube channel, and I will see you next Wednesday. And that's it for March 2024 Speak Out and Play podcast. Thank you for joining me. 
The Speak Out and Play podcast comes out on the Monday before the last Wednesday of each month on BuzzFeed and Spotify. You can catch the podcast on the Seek Out and Play YouTube channel on the last Wednesday of each month. Seek Out and Play releases a new video each week, so I will see you next Wednesday. And if you see Sally, bring her all the way home.